past, Britain's food supplies have been drawn from many sources. Home production accounted for two-fifths of requirements, and the remainder came from all parts of the globe. Bacon and butter across the North Sea from Denmark. Wheat from Canada. From the River Plate, the beef and wheat of South America. Beef and wheat round from Australia. While both ways round the world from New Zealand came no less than two-thirds of Britain's imported cheese. One half of her imports of lamb and mutton. And a third of her imported butter. The outbreak of war found New Zealand farmers starting a new production year and unable to alter their plans very greatly. It was too late to do much to answer the call of the mother country for increased food supplies and raw materials. When the Mediterranean route was threatened, New Zealand with regular routes both ways round the world could readily readjust her traffic to Britain. But even back here on our New Zealand farms we find enemy invasion cutting off Britain's food supplies. The parachute troops of Ragwort and Thistle have established themselves. Pasture is sabotaged by cheap seed, lack of top dressing and poor drainage, and there are numerous wasted areas. In many cases far too little winter feed has been stored. Our stock is inadequately wintered, and so production is low in the spring. There is also room for greatly increased fig production. Thus our farms are producing well below capacity, as though much of their area had been cut off by the enemy. Counter-offensive gets underway with the new rural housing scheme for farm workers. On loans at low rates from local bodies or direct from state advances, farmers are building town quality houses for the married men who are replacing the soldiers on the land. Houses for the farmers themselves also. And for the remaining single men, there are good worries erected at low cost. It's better to have bags round the house than sandbags. Saving fertilizer bags happens to be important. The cheapest barley for many years has aided pig raising. To assist in training, the government is paying 30 shillings a week towards the wages of inexperienced men employed on farms. Unemployed men are clearing land, the government paying three quarters of their wages. On the Blackberry front, the tractor breaks through and the harrow tears up the vines, allowing a sheep to get in. Blown to a neighbour, the same outfit soon knocks over the ancient stumps of the drained peat swamps. reserve are ample supplies of certified seed for the new pastures and for special crops. Fertilizer prices have been kept low to encourage adequate top dressing. All the time the plough is consolidating our gains, turning up soil for new pastures, turning in worn out grass, making the seed beds for new areas of winter feed. At the close of the 1940-41 season, with victory in sight on the farming front, a new crisis arises. Ships have been lost.
ships have been drawn off in great numbers to take men and materials to drive back the Axis from the Middle East. Britain has had to shorten and concentrate her shipping routes, and the routes from New Zealand were the longest. Meanwhile, meat is coming into our coal stores, but not all can now be shipped overseas, and stocks pile up. These stocks we are storing in expanded coal storage space to form reserves ready for post-war relief. Though this lack of ships has been a setback, it does not deprive us of our victories on the land. In the 1940-41 season, we grew linen flax for the first time, raising in the South Island over 13,000 acres to aid Britain. In the 41-42 season, we want 25,000 acres of this crop. Thus a large new industry, having already 11 mills, is buying crops from the farmers. In the new season too, we want 300,000 acres of wheat, 61,000 acres of oats, and an increased crop of barley. We want too an ample supply of small seeds for our own use and for export. To aid Britain again, our dairy industry is working to produce 160,000 tons of cheese in the season. Cheese is a valuable and concentrated food, well worth its shipping space. To Britain too goes all the wool that we can raise. So wool and linen flax, cheese and seeds go overseas. The job now is to produce these things, to build up reserves to be rushed to Europe when the war is over, and to have good farms ready for the returned men. We must hold the position we have won on the land and stand ready to produce whatever is needed to aid us all to victory. <laughs>